Azawajal in Surah Al Haqqah opens the surah by asking a very strange question. In fact, a statement. The first ayah is just one word, Al Haqqah, which has several meanings, but the easiest way you can think of it is reality. Allah says, Reality. Mal Haqqah, what is reality? And what could give you any clue as to what reality is? The purpose of asking that question is because Allah is claiming in the surah that most human beings don't live in reality. Most, be, most human beings come up with their own version of what is real, what matters, and then that decides the kind of life that they live. And so Allah is challenging every human being in the surah to step back and think about reality once again. We wake up in the morning, we regain our consciousness, and immediately we have very real tasks in front of us. There's work, there's family, there's obligations, there's nowadays there's suhoor, and there's, you know, there's things that we get involved with every day, day-to-day -day tasks, one task after another after another. You're keeping an eye on the watch to keep track of time so that you can finish whatever real and important tasks you have during the day. And we get so involved in those day-to-day -day tasks, you don't step back and look at the bigger picture. And this is a very common tendency that all human beings have. We can be so involved in doing everyday things that we can't step back and look at the bigger picture and ask ourselves a bigger question. Where is my life going? Because you're so busy in everyday things. This, is, this happens even at the, in the world of business. So you have people like you know, accountants or engineers or anybody else. They just get up in the morning, they go to work, they do their job. But a company cannot survive if everybody's just doing their job. Somebody has to be in management that says, no, we have a six-month target or we have a one-year target or somebody has a bigger picture in their mind and above them is an executive and above them are strategists and analysts and everybody else who have a five-year plan and a ten-year plan because you can't just be micro-tasked and just do small, small tasks and maintain a vision of what's ahead, what really matters in the end. So the small things that we do, they're connected to much bigger things, right? And Allah has created this system, for example, in bees and ants and other creatures, they do small tasks, right? Every ant knows what to do to build an ant farm. Every bee, bee knows which part of the honeycomb to be a part of or where to be involved. Every one of them knows a small task, but Allah has designed them to do something bigger than each of those small tasks. They're part of something much bigger. This is one way we can think about what reality truly is. We have these small things that we do, but if they're not connected to something bigger, then we don't have a true sense of reality. Then these things that we do are disconnected. And so what Allah does in the surah is He approaches the question of reality in different ways. What I'm going to do in these less than 20 minutes is share one of those scenes with you of when all of these small moments of our life are going to come to an end, sooner or later we're going to be under the ground. And then after that, the true event, the ultimate reality is going to begin. And in that reality, everything is reversed. Here in this world, we do small things that lead to big things. That's how this world works. You do small, small things, like even if you want to build a giant building, you have to start with a foundation, one brick at a time, one plank of wood at a time, one nail at a time, and eventually it turns into something big. But judgment day, everything is reversed. So big things happen first, leading to the smallest thing. And it's, this is the scene that Allah will describe and how reality, true reality, is what's coming on Judgment Day. So I'm going to paint that scene for you briefly in today's khutbah. Typically when I give a khutbah, I focus on one or two ayat. But today, inshallah, I'm going to look at a, a series, a group of ayat together. And we're going to try to understand the picture that Allah is painting of that ultimate reality. May Allah make all of us successful on that day. فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ then when the horn will be blown into a single time. You see the idea of the horn being blown into, we know that on Judgment Day there are two horns. Allah describes two horns. Now Allah will combine both of those scenes into one in this surah. And what He's doing here, by using even the word horn, it brings certain concepts to mind. In human memory, when, when you, if you talk to the ancient Arabs who were not Muslim, when the Qur'an came, most of the people that were listening to the Qur'an were not Muslim in Mecca, 
the majority was non-Muslims and they were hearing these words. So when they hear horn, what are they thinking about? They're not thinking about the akhirah, they're not thinking about the concepts of the ghaib, the way we think of them as Muslims. They're thinking of when they go to war and there's a bugle or there's a horn and it's sounded and all the soldiers that are sleeping wake up and they know exactly where to go to line up because war is coming. It's the state of alarm. Right? So you have, for example, even nowadays in barracks and in, in you know, uh, military camps and things like that, there's an alarm or there's a sound or there's a horn that goes off and every soldier knows they're supposed to gear up, get in uniform and get to their regiment and stand exactly. And if, even if there's 10,000 soldiers or 20,000 soldiers, every one of them knows exactly what to do for their part. They're not standing in a random cloud, crowd, they're all regimented, organized. The, the sounding of the horn Allah Azza wa says elsewhere in the Quran, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُوَا Nobody knows the armies of your Rabb except Him. When this horn is sounded, every creation of Allah acts as if they were reserved soldiers waiting for this signal to get in position. So all of creation starts getting in, all the angels of Allah, the skies, the clouds, the earth, everything starts moving into this position for this event, for this presentation. And so what Allah describes right after this is when she, so فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالِ And the earth, uh, the earth and the mountains start getting lifted up, they start getting carried. The idea of them being, the earth and the mountain being carried is strange because everything else is carried by them. The earth carries me and you, the earth carries our homes, the earth, earth carries everything. And the mountains carry all of the trees and the rock and everything else. They're not the ones that are carried, they're the ones that do the carrying. Allah is already describing a scene where everything we thought to be real is being reversed. It's being flipped on its head. So the earth will be lifted, will be carried. And the mountains along with them will be carried. This also suggests what we thought will always be in place. What we thought has weight, it seems like it's losing weight. It's just being carried. فَدُكَّتَا دَكَّةً وَاحِدَةً Then it will be slammed down and duck in Arabic is to slam something down when it becomes flat. Like if you take dough and it's wet, right? And you slam it really hard and it just becomes flat. Right? This, this idea is what Allah is describing is going to happen to the entire earth. So the ups and downs of the earth disappear. Other places in the Qur'an Allah will describe this as إِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ When the earth is going to be stretched flat. Right, but here, or when the when the oceans are, are, are boiling over, or in Surah Al-Kahf, he describes this as Sa'id and Juruza, flat land, and you know slippery land. But here he describes it; it will be slammed down and laid flat. Now, the idea of something being laid flat means it's being it's a surface that's being prepared. Why is the earth being turned into this flat surface? As we see the ayat progress, we're going to see this this uh, uh, scene open up, he says, فَيَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ On that day, the actual event will have taken place. Now already said, uh, he already said الْحَاقَةِ Now he's saying الْوَاقِعَةِ But الْوَاقِعَةِ is a really interesting word because it comes from وَقِيعَ and وَقِيعَ means a heavy weight. It means a heavy weight. So Allah is saying, on that day, the heavy weight shall be dropped. And that's an expression to describe the ultimate reality will fall. Will, will happen. Because you know when something is real, it's weighty, it's serious, it has, it has substance. And when something is not real, it's weightless, it's empty. So Allah says that's when, true, when the true weight will be dropped, or that's when the ultimate reality will fall. When shakkat is sama. So this is what was happening on the earth, the earth has been made flat. Then Allah says when shakkat is sama. Then the sky is going to be ripped open. The, the word in shiqaq is used when you, if you have a cloth, and you tear it in the middle, and you get this slit in the middle, right? That's called in shiqaq, right? So Allah uses that word to describe what's happening with the sky. When shakkat is sama, fa idha hiya yoma idhim wahiya. Then on that day, it just starts opening up, and wal malaku ala arjaiha. And so as the sky starts opening up and tearing, tearing this this opening starts coming, then Allah says the angels. And perhaps starting with Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salam, because it's used in the singular, but it's ismu jins, it includes everyone, the angels are going to start lining up in the opening. Now I want you to appreciate what's happening here. In ancient times, when armies used to conquer, they used to, the, the ancient cities used to be gated up by giant walls, and they had giant gates, 
and they put lots of fortifications on the gates because the enemy cannot come through the wall, the enemy is going to have to come through the gates. And when they open, if the gate gets broken and the gate gets opened up, that means that city has been conquered. And once that city is conquered, the new army, the, the invading army, they line up around the gate to welcome the general, to welcome the conquering king. It's, you're, you're getting prepared for the conquest, right? And it's, it's the scene that's being borrowed in the language of these ayat in that first the land was made flat. Then the, the sky was torn open. Now what, what's the idea of the sky torn open? Some of you that are students of science or even, even kids that are studying science know the sky is empty space. It's void. How, what do you mean the sky is torn open? Allah is describing what easily you can understand as dimensions. There's the seen dimension in which you and I can see each other and we think this is real. But in this very moment, there are angels in our presence. In this very moment, there are kiram and katibin, noble angels that are documenting everything in a script. In a book that is being, it's, it's not even written in ink, it's kitabul marqum, it's being stitched into the, into the pages. Because you know the idea of ink is that if water hits it, it can get smudged. Or you can rub it with your thumb and it can get smudged. But if you stitch the writing in, embroidery, we call it embroidery, the, our deeds are being embroidered into the page. Kitabu Marqum. This is Rakam in Arabic. That's how it's being recorded. But there, that's happening right now, but we don't see it. Because it's happening in, behind a curtain. And the curtain is called the ghayb, right? Behind the, the veil of the ghayb. And that's why this word, this, this, this idea of the ghayb, what's going to happen on Judgment Day? Well, you know, فَكَشَفْنَا anka غِطَاءَكْ Like in Surah Al-Qaf, Surah Al-Qaf he says, we've, we've, un, we've lifted the cover. We've lifted the cover from you. So there is a cover on my eyes right now, which keeps me from being able to see the unseen. The same way, you know, when you go to a doctor and they're doing an x-ray, through the x-ray machine, they can see something you cannot see right now. There's a lens, there's a, there's a, there's a device there that's, re, you know, removing the cover of the scene. And you're able to penetrate trade through and see something that otherwise you couldn't see. The same thing happens in military technology. They put heat seeking, you know, goggles on, you know, and you could see through a wall and you could see how many people are on the other side. Things like that, right? So it's, it's similar to that. So Allah is now saying that the curtain of the unseen is being torn open. And what's on the other side of that unseen? It's the angels. It's the unseen world. And they start coming through into the seen world. So now for the first time, human beings can see the angels judge, on Judgment Day. And they, this gate that's been opened, that's been torn open, the angels, Allah describes, they start lining up all around the sides of this gate on its corners. وَالْمَلَكُ عَلَىٰ أَرْجَائِهَا وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةً And the arsh, the throne of your Rabb, is going to be carried on that day by eight. Allah doesn't say what the eight is. The Mufassirun would discuss these are eight special angels that are, that are assigned to carry the throne or some, some version of the throne of Allah that will be brought down just to let human beings see the king's judgment is about to begin. Because in old times, what the, the symbolism was important because kings would be carried by guards on a kind of pseudo throne because the ultimate throne is somewhere else but this is a, a portable kind of throne that's being brought just for this special event of judgment day even if the king's not even in it yet the throne is being brought so yahmilu arsha rabbika fawqahum yawma idhin thamaniya the the armies have opened up the gate the throne is being brought down by by eight now are these eight angels are these eight other creations of allah that allah has described are they, Ali radiallahu anhu and other sahaba said, is it eight? Is it eight thousand? Is it eight legions? Is it, what, what, mahiya, mahiya hadhi thaman? We don't know what these eight are. And that's something Allah didn't tell us. So he says, yawma idhin tu'radun. So why is all of this happening? Why is the earth being slammed flat? Why is the sky being torn open? Why are the angels showing up all of a sudden? Why is the throne arriving? Why is all of this happening? Allah says, yawma idhin tu'radun. The day on which you will all, He's talking to me, he's talking to you. You will all we will be brought for presentation. Du'aradun. La takhfa minkum khafiyah. Nothing that had ever been hidden will be hidden from you today. So you notice something. Really big things were happening 
And all of a sudden, the really small thing that was hidden from the entire world, nobody knew except you and me, the things that I said, the things that I did, the intentions that I had, even if people saw my actions, they didn't see my intentions, they were hidden. They, even the intentions, even, even before, everybody's praying here, everybody's sitting in Salatul Jum'ah here, but our intentions may be different. It may be that somebody has a different, and you can't see that. There's no way for you to see, it. it's hidden. And on that day, nothing hidden will remain hidden. Nothing gets remain hidden. And some, some Sahaba looked at this ayah and said, that's because even human beings won't even have clothes on on that day. Nobody will care. Because Allah will expose not only people's deeds, but expose them. You know? So, لا, لا تَخْفَ مِنْكُمْ خَافِيَةً Now, it's as if this huge event, where the skies and the earth got rearranged, re-engineered. The entire purpose of it was, you and me. The entire purpose of it was, you and I have to stand in front of Allah and show up for this trial. This is all preparation for the event. The question arises, Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Hakim. He owns all wisdom. And Allah Azza wa Jal, إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah just says, be and it becomes. So Allah could just decide immediately, as soon as I die, put him in Jahannam. Put him in Jannah. He could decide immediately. He doesn't need a full event. He doesn't need to tear open the sky and make the whole, have the angel show up and then the throne is showing up and then every single deed is being counted. Allah doesn't need to count the deeds. Allah knows everything already. You know, Allah has the entire calculation and the entire hisab. Who has better hisab than Allah? So what's the purpose of Allah doing this entire scene in front of us? Actually, this is because of the concept of justice. In this world, human beings, one of the things they desire is justice. And how is justice done? There's two things that happen, have to happen if you want to have justice. One thing that has to happen is, there has to be fairness in the trial. There has to be fairness in the trial. And the second thing that has to happen is, you have to show the trial. You can't do it in secret. If the police arrest someone and they take him, and they put him in jail, and they say, no, 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 he was found guilty. Where, when was he found guilty? Where was the trial? Oh, that was held in secret. Trust me, it was fair. Well, if it was secret, the immediate thing that everybody will think is, if it was so fair, why are you hiding it? Why aren't you showing the evidence? Why aren't you opening it up? So it's not just that justice has to be done, justice has to be shown also. Both of those things have to happen. Somebody could be thrown in Jahannam and they could say, Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, Allah put me here, but I was a pretty good guy. I don't even know why I'm here. I, I, was, I did pretty good. And they, they could just, even if they're not a good person, they could have that excuse because they, it wasn't shown, right? In fact, some people even try making excuses on Judgment Day. And what does Allah do? Allah shows, لا تخفى منكم خافية Nothing will remain hidden, nothing good will remain hidden, nothing bad will remain hidden, and you yourself, I myself will testify that Allah did fairly. That this was a fair trial. Nothing, no, no unfairness was done to anybody. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ the, the, the smallest amount of good and the smallest amount of bad, you'll get to see it yourself. That's the point of it. So this entire event is being made so Allah could show how fair it is and you and I can see this event happening. This is the preparation for that trial. Now just imagine for a moment, you know, we have events, like there's somebody's throwing an Eid party, there's an event, right? Or there's a, let's think of a bigger event, there's a, there's a new president being inaugurated or a new prime minister being selected. They have an event, they have an inauguration, right? Or there's a national celebration day. That's an event, it's a big deal. When there's a big deal, there's a lot of preparation. Allah has done this much preparation, this much, so many ayat dedicated to the preparation of the event. From the sounding of the horn, to the tearing of the sky, to the angels lining up, to the throne showing up. All for what major event? My deeds, your deeds. That's how important our deeds are to Allah. We think they're small. Remember I told you in the beginning, in this world, small leads up to big. And what's happening on Judgment Day? Big is leading to the smallest things that you and I have ever done. So we never think lightly of the words that come out of our mouth. We don't think lightly of the deeds that we do. That's the point of it. So he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ 
فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَ And there's only two minutes left, so I'll just briefly mention and read this on your own, inshaAllah, you'll benefit from it. He says, and for the one who gets the book handed to them, anybody who gets the book handed to them in their right hand. May Allah make all of us from those people. So when they get handed their book in their right hand, Allah describes ha um, ha um. Ha um means come here and take it. One of the meanings of ha um is come here and take it. So not only, you know, on Judgment Day, you have, you have heard descriptions of Judgment Day before. On Judgment Day, nobody cares about anybody else. يَوْمَ تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ Even a mother that was feeding her baby is going to drop her baby. That's the description of Judgment Day. يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِيهِ You're gonna run from your mother, your father, your brother, your spouse. You're gonna run from your entire village, all your people. You see them, you run the other way. You don't care about anybody else. In fact, you know, لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمَ إِذِن you know, in, in, that, in those sequence of ayat, وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ A human being will say on that day, Ya Allah, all of these other people from Adam alayhi salam until now, all of these, Ya Allah, put them in hell, let me go. That's what they're gonna say. وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ On that day, some people get the book on their right hand. And they are so happy, they're the only ones, they're not just happy for themselves, they're going and showing their friends, their family, hey, look at this, take my book, take my book, look, 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 at this. look at this. Look at what Allah did. And the question is, I know I'm over my time, so I'll just take one more minute. The question is, my book, if, and I pray to Allah, you and I get our book in our right hand. But even if we get our book in our right hand, it's not only full of good deeds. I'm not an angel. I have mistakes in my life. I have things that I'm embarrassed about. They're in the book too. And when you have good things and you have bad things, and that's your whole life, I don't know if I want to hand it to somebody else and they flip a page, like, what's this over here? You did this too? You did this too? So why is this person so happy to show other people their book? Even though the book has good deeds, it also has bad deeds. This is actually the concept of maghfirah in the Qur'an. Allah, even though the book deeds are not erased, the, book, the bad deeds are covered. They're covered. And you can tell there was a bad deed here, and it got covered with istighfar. There was a bad deed here, it got covered by a good deed. There was a bad deed here, you know, like back in the day, kids used to write with pen, and then uh, they regretted what they wrote, and they put white out on top. And then they write on top of that. You can tell there's white out here. It's like that. It's like you could tell some of the deeds got covered and you're so happy. Look, I made so many mistakes and Allah whited out so many things. And He replaced them with so many good things. Look at how much Allah cares for me. Look at how much Allah forgave me. Look at how much Allah is merciful. And then there are some things that were, you thought were very small deeds. They're just a small, small sadaqah. It was a, a small, you just helped somebody. You just smiled at somebody. You were just kind, kind to somebody on the road. You know, you just asked somebody, you know, you spoke to somebody nicely. Something small, you never thought about it. And you see it in your book and it's like a huge chapter worth so much, worth a mountain. Look, this was worth a mountain? Ya Allah, how did you multiply this? How did you turn this into this entire massive thing? So you're so happy with what's there. You're going around like other places in the Quran. Allah says, وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا He's gonna go back telling his family happily. And that's the scene. That's how umukra'u kitabiyah. Inni zanantu anni mulaqin hisabiyah. Fahuwa fi ishatin radiyah. I know it's over my time, but at least this part of the people of the right, I just want to share a couple of quick things with you about them. He says, I was so sure that I'm going to meet my audit. The word audit, I'm using hisabiyah as a tr the translation of it as an audit. Audit means every item is going to be asked about. What was this? What did you do here? Why did you, what was happening here at 2 a.m.? What was happening here on this day? What was happening on Friday night? What was happening there? Every item. I was so scared that Allah is going to ask me about every single thing. And now that I see my book, I see that Allah went easy on me. Allah went easy on me. So he's saying now, now that he got his book, he saw how much Allah has, what Allah describes as, فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا He will give, them an, give him an easy audit. So now he's turning to Allah and saying, I was so scared that it's going to be a really tough hisab. You know, فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ Then Allah says he's going to be in a life in which everything, everything will make him happy. 
everything will be. You know, sometimes even if you're going on the best vacation, something is still wrong. You have the best, you're wearing the best clothes, you're enjoying the best food, you're in the nicest hotel, nicest view, nicest room in the, everything is perfect. There's still some depression inside you. There's some, some, thought, some problem, some memory, something in your head. It's, the food doesn't taste as good because something is still missing. Because, you know, fully becoming content, fully being happy is almost, it seems almost impossible for human beings to fully, fully in every way be happy. There's something always there to take it away a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Allah describes this life with such mubalagha, with such hyperbole in, in, in Jannah. He doesn't say the person will be happy. He says the life itself will be, will be content. So he, he didn't say, فَهُوَ رَاضٍ فِي عِيشَةِ الْجَنَّةِ He will be content in the life of Jannah. He says, فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَ Which is a strange kind of isti'ara, suggesting every part of life, every experience in Jannah is going to make you completely satisfied, completely happy, 100% every time. Sometimes you give somebody a gift and they're like, thank you. And they're like, what? It's not nice? No, it's really nice. Ah, it's just a lot on my mind. You're like, Fayda kya, I give you a gift and you're still looking depressed. You can't, impossible to make you happy, right? Because that's not this life, you can't be fully content. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةٍ قُطُوفُهَا دَانِيَةٍ Last one I promise. He says, Allah Azza wa Jal says, they will be in high gardens. They will be in a high garden. Other places in the Qur'an, Allah describes a garden. But here He doesn't just describe a garden, He calls it a high garden. It was really interesting because the word aliyah can be used in both the ma'nawi and the, and the maddi way. What, what does that mean? This will be a garden. Not only is it high so you get this beautiful view. That's the one description. And we know that when you have a nice view, when you go on top of a mountain, if you've ever been hiking or you go on a road trip or somewhere, and there's a nice view, all of a sudden the moment you take in a nice view, it brings a calm to you. It feels good to stand there and just appreciate it for a moment. Even when you're going on a road trip and there's sometimes they have these scenic spots where you can pull over your car, right? Even though if you're getting late, you're like, just one minute, just one minute, just let me just look at it for a second. And you, everybody takes pause. And there's some sakina that comes when you're in a high place. And Allah says, Jannatin Aliyah, every time you look out, it adds to your tranquility, it adds to your calm. It also suggests that as far as you can see is yours. You're on the, you're on the top of it, and as far as you can see is your property in every direction. فَهُوَ فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةٍ But it suggests something else too. This is going to be a garden that's very elite. You ever heard the term, these are high people, they live in high places? This is high society? Right, when you go to, if, if you're not from high society and you got invited to a wedding or some event in high society, you walk in and you're like, wow, this place is fancy. I don't think I'm dressed for this place. This place is too fancy for me. You know, I don't know, if I, I don't want to break anything. Can I, am I allowed to sit here? The sofa looks really expensive. I don't know if I could be here. So you get, you get almost uncomfortable because it's so high, it's so posh. You know, like you go to like these exquisite museums and everything says do not touch, <laughs> right? Even if it's, it doesn't say do not touch, if you go to some really expensive per, you know, home or some mansion, you'll feel like do not touch. Ooh, I want to be careful. Can I, should I take my shoes off? Should I, can I go here? Because you're extra careful. But if you're extra careful, you're not comfortable. Because you're, you're, you're not adjusted. So what does Allah do? Allah makes you immediately comfortable. He says, قُطُوفُ هَدَانِيَ the, tr the, the fruits will come down and start serving you immediately. SubhanAllah. So you don't feel like you're out of place. No, no, no. You're not supposed to be you know, showing respect for this place. This place is showing respect to you. قُطُوفُ هَدَانِيَ Allah says, كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةِ Now eat and drink. Carefree, happily, enjoy yourself, relax. And other places in the Quran, Allah will describe cups that are splashing, meaning you don't even care if it spills. You don't even care, you know. They're playing around with each other. You know, you're, you're joking around, playing around while you're enjoying food with each other and, you know, having company, enjoying company of each other. This is the scene that Allah describes of Judgment Day. Right after Judgment Day, a person who thought they were so scared that they're going to meet their hisab. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةٍ قُطُوفُهَا دَانِيَةٍ كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةٍ From the days that are gone, that are emptied out. 
these days are being emptied out every single day. You can't get today back. You can't get last week back. Already it's been a few days of fasting. We can't even keep track. It's going so, 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 so fast. So these days are going to be, you're going to look back and life will be like a bottle that's being emptied out quickly. And Allah describes that, that, that idea. And the purpose of that is so you and I realize in these few days that we have left on this planet, let's make the most of it. So we can fill that book with things that we can open up and we can show to somebody else and say, look man, this is, I did good. And Allah was so merciful to me. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us all people of the right hand, people that receive the book in their right hand. And may Allah Azza wa Jal allow us to reunite in, in His Jannah in the most beautiful high place. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat.